What's up guys? JC Ron Strong. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, hit a like, give me a comment. This week we've been going a little bit more into detail about my life and stuff that I went through and things that happened. How I ended up in Arizona and so forth. It's been 17 years since my boy Cato was murdered. Today we're going to go a little bit more into detail about what it was for me to go through that while I was here, why I ended up here, and pretty much just sharing a part of my story with you guys. JC, let's get into this. Hey guys, what's up? JC, Ron Strong. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, hit a like, leave me a comment, tell me what you think. I've been um, sharing a lot about my story this week. And the reason is, is for you to actually get to know a little bit more about me. Uh, people have been asking me about my boy Cato to, you know, talk a little bit more about what it was and how it was and everything um for those of you that don't know uh, my my son is named after Cato Rudy and my daughter Valerie is named after his wife Valerie is the one that ended up marrying one of the twin brothers uh, she wrote that book uh cartel wives she's on their uh you know that uh, program where they erase your identity and everything under protection um, if you read that book you'll get a little bit more insight about how how deep we were in that life of you know making money making moves and doing stuff and like I always tell everybody I share my story so this could be a learning tool and for you to actually see the truth behind that lifestyle. I don't share it to glamorize what I did or, or who I knew or how it went down. None of that. I get a lot of comments. No, I share it so you don't make the decisions that I make, I made in the past and end up how I did, you know, 17 years of your life pretty much lost. For a long, long time, I was very, very confused, and I thought that that was going to be my life. No, this is my life, and I share it with you guys. So if you're looking for a cooking channel, we're going to have some prison food soon. And also, guys, stay safe out there with everything that's going on. Uh, I know it's crazy. You know, I know I made a, a, a funny video about it. We have to try and remain calm and, and just laugh at certain things sometimes just so we could like make it through the day and, and not stress so much. I get it. You should be safe. You should take care of yourself. All that stuff. But at the same time, smile once in a while. <laughs> That's a hard smile. <laughs> you know, my boy, my boy Cato. You know, you, you've seen many videos about him and interviews and stuff like that. Fat Joe has talked about him. DMX has talked about him. I mean, you name it. Like, we we did it. We were around everybody you could possibly think of, from Swiss Beats to uh, Kanye West to Fat Joe. I mean, you name it. Like, it was that lifestyle of rap videos, money, uh, just the big, big, big life. And was he a big gang boss? Yeah. Was he a big gang leader? Yeah. Was he a big dope boy? Yeah, we all were. We all were. It was the hand that we kind of like got forced into and dealt. And with time, that's what we thought we were supposed to be. But you don't know this dude the way that I knew him. He actually 
made me leave Chicago when I caught my last case. And I'll make a video about that on my next one. But when I was a same disciple, that's an enemy gang of the Land Kings, I was set up. I was set up with some of my very, very close friends. I ended up beating the case. But that was, that was when I said enough is enough. Jealousy and greed was killing me. You know, and he told me, why don't you come home? You, knew, you know that you grew up on 26th Street. You, I grew up on 29th Street in Christiana. That's where my family had their home for over 30 years. My grandparents, my dad, everybody. I knew all these dudes since I was a kid. The only reason why I ended up on 59th Street and Spalding was because my dad was never home and my grandparents stepped in to take me out of that, me being alone at the house all the time and they took me to their home on 59th Street. So I changed neighborhoods. I was a kid. I was in seventh grade. So when he told me come home, I went home and I did the unspeakable that a lot of people don't talk about in Chicago. They call it being a pancake. <laughs> you flip sides. I did it. I did it because at the end of the day, I was so disgusted with how they had betrayed me over money and greed and power that I was fucking disgusted and I wanted to be part of something better. He protected me, he let me come over because a lot of the Land Kings from 25th and Trumbull didn't like me. Didn't like me, why? Because I came from the other side. I got really close with Cato because of Valerie, his wife. Valerie is my childhood friend that I've known since I was 16. Valerie was the one that taught me the game. Valerie was the one that showed me how to make money and how to get in, get in the game. She taught me even how to dress, jabos, all that stuff. I remember the first time that I made money, I went and I bought myself like, just like cheap clothes. And she's like, no, dude, you, you got 20 G's in your pocket. You're not gonna dress like that. So, you know, she is someone really big in my life. She was someone really big in my life as a kid. And then he became a big role in my life as a street mentor, almost like a father figure, if you could say that, because I was at his house every morning, you know, just there every morning. And when you flip sides like that, everybody in Chicago wanted to freaking kill me. So, he was always there to protect me. And then I'm gonna share more stuff along the ways. But he was the one that actually told me, you know what? Just leave to Arizona. Leave, go promote my music over there because that's when he had first, you know, he had his record label, De Niro Records. And he's like, just promote my music, promote my rappers, go out there, take care of X, you know, DMX, and, and just do your thing out there, stay out of trouble because he was actually worried about how much drug use I was involved in, how much trouble I was getting in, and how I was literally getting chased and shot at every day because of what my life had, you know, turned to be. Never did I think that by me actually making big connections would result in people trying to kill me every day, trying to kill my wife, trying to just rob me and, and all these things. It was like chaos. So he convinced me to come to Arizona. I came to Arizona and I'll never forget. I'll never forget the day that I got that call. I was actually dating a Chicago police officer her name was Erica. She called me and she's like, yo, I just heard it on the radio. And I was like, what? She's like, Cato just got killed. 
And I was like, nah, you know, you you're you're you 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 got it wrong. Twenty minutes later, I got a call from his wife. Yo, JC, they they killed Cato. She was hysterical on the phone. She was going crazy. And I, I couldn't believe it because for the first time in my life, I had built a very strong bond with somebody. Was he everything that people said he was? Yeah. But people don't realize that people like that, people like me, have hearts too. And, and we... We just do what we have to do to survive. You know, I, I took that loss very, very hard. I still take it hard to this day. Because that was that was my that was my dog. He looked out for me in times that I needed somebody the most. The most. When everybody was out to try and kill me, he was there side by side with me. And you'll learn more about this when you guys read my book when it's released. I'm talking about people going to my restaurant, shootings, all kinds of stuff because he had my back 100%. This is the downest, realest, coolest dude I've ever met in my whole life. And you know, you know what was so crazy is that Valerie co-signed for me and from that day on, he took me in as a fucking brother. And when I turned the king, I slapped that crown on my neck. It was because of him. It wasn't because of the whole organization. It was because of him. Because I was down for him and I was going to be down for whatever he said was going to be down for. When I beat that case and he made me leave to Arizona and I got that call that day, I almost felt guilty because I felt like I could have done something or I should have been there. And I fell into a very, very bad place in my life with my addiction. It's almost like I felt so guilty that I wanted to, like, just smoke my whole life away. And I'll never forget, I had a dream. I was sitting at a bus stop, and he rolled up. And this is, this is real. I'm not bullshitting. He got off the bus, he sat next to me, and he told me that he was proud of me for staying out here, for going to work every day, because it was in the first, first steps of my life of, of wanting to change. I had got a job in construction, and I told him, but I want to go back home. I don't like it out here. I don't have nobody out here. I'm not part of nothing out here. And he told me, stay out here, because if you go back home, they're going to kill you just like they killed me. And I cried and cried. And he got on the bus and he left and I chased the bus. And I was crying so much that at the time, my baby's mom woke me up and she's like, dude, you were like crying so much in your sleep. Because I had so much to tell him. I needed to tell him that. My, my son was going to be named after him. I needed to tell him that my daughter was named after him. And from that day on, I started to sober up. I felt that there was closure in my heart. People don't understand that even though you grow up in this life on the streets, you see a lot of murders. You see a lot of betrayal, you see a lot I see a lot of things that hurt you in the long run. But the the thing is is that we still have hearts even though we live that way. Does that make sense? We still have hearts, we still have feelings, we still have a soul. And for me to lose him was very, very dramatic in my life. Today, I live my life to the fullest, 100% how I should. When nobody's watching, I still walk a straight line. I still do what's right because I owe it to him. Because if it wasn't for him, I would probably be dead. And because of him, 
I'm out here and I'm doing what I'm doing now. I share these stories so people could see that it's never too late to change. That people can change. That your past is not defined who you are today. My name is JC. I am Ron Strong. I share my stories as a learning tool, as information, not to glamorize who I knew or what I did, never that. I share my story so you guys can get to know who I am and what I've been through. That's all guys. I love you guys.